domain and range. So domain is all the possible values we can have for x. So these are all our values for x. Range is all the values we can have for y. And to work out domain and range, we could either graph our function or think about it logically. And we're going to look at how we can do a bit of both. Let's have a look at the function y equals 2x plus 1. And we want to state its domain and range. So what's its domain? So we're going to look at two ways in which we can write it. So if it's something easy to graph, I suggest that you do graph it. So this is a straight line with y-intercept 1 and a gradient of 2. So it's x-intercept will be minus a half, and we can graph it like this. So we're looking at, are there any values of x that we can't have? To check if there's any values of x we can't have, we just draw a vertical line, and if it didn't cut the graph, that would be a value for x we couldn't have. But it doesn't matter where I draw a vertical line, I'd be able to cut the graph anywhere. And for y values, we're drawing horizontal lines, and if there's anywhere where it didn't cut the graph, I couldn't, we couldn't have a y value there. So in this case, we can have all values for x and all values for y. So how do we write that? So we can write it in two ways. For our domain, we can write, we can have all real values of x. So real is just a real number. In our range, we can write all real y. We can also write it in interval notation. And to write it in interval notation for your domain, well, it's all real values of x, so we write that as that the values of x can be between minus infinity and infinity, and we do, we do a curly bracket to show that it doesn't equal those values as well, because it can't equal infinity. And our range is the exact same thing. We can have all values between minus infinity and infinity. Let's look at another example. y equals x squared minus 4. So let's graph this one out, because it's just a parabola that's being shifted down to minus 4. And it'd be concave up, because it's a positive x squared going through minus 4. And let's check for our domain and range. So for our domain, we're drawing vertical lines, and is there anywhere where it wouldn't cut the graph? Well, no, because even out here, it would eventually cut it. So there's nowhere where it can be. So our domain is all real x. So our range we test with horizontal lines. It can cut the graph here, here, everywhere. But once we get below minus 4, we don't have any values. So we write our range, y has to be greater than or equal to minus 4. Let's have a look in interval notation. So for all real x, we already know we can write that between minus infinity and infinity. But for our range, well, we know it can equal minus 4, but it has to be also above minus 4. So we, if it can equal the value, we put a square bracket, and we start with our lowest value, which is minus 4, and our highest value, well, it can go anywhere towards infinity, but it can never equal infinity, so we put the curly bracket on that side. What about the function y equals root x minus 5? Let's do this one without graphing. Let's think about it. If we have a square root, everything in a square root equaling y, we know that square root has to be 
greater than or equal to zero. So that means y has to be greater than or equal to zero. So we've actually got our range first. We know y has to be greater than or equal to zero because everything's wrapped in a square root. But in terms of x, everything inside there has to be positive because we can't have a negative square root. So we can do a little bit of working out saying that x minus five has to be greater than or equal to zero because otherwise we'd get a negative value in our square root which we can't have. We can add five to both sides and this is telling us that x has to be greater than or equal to five which is what our domain is. Let's look at that in set notation, in interval notation. Okay, so for our domain, we know x has to be greater than or equal to five, so the lower value is five, it can be equal to, so we put a square bracket, and it can go all the way up to infinity, and we put an open bracket. For our range, we know y is greater than or equal to zero, that's our lower value, and it can be equal to, so we put a square bracket, going up to infinity with a curved bracket. What about y equals 2x squared over x? Well, let's make some, some notes before we find our domain and range. Now, we have to note that x can't equal 0 because the denominator is just x by itself and we can't be dividing by 0. What about y? Whenever we have a fraction, we need to consider what values make the entire fraction zero. And if the numerator equals zero, that's the only way that y could be zero. To make the numerator zero, x would have to be zero, but we know x can't be zero, so that means y can also never be zero as well. So let's make a note of that. So when there's only one value excluded for each, we can write our domain like this, all real x, comma, except x cannot equal zero. And we can do the same thing for y. So it's all real y, except y cannot equal zero. How do we write this in interval notation? Okay, so when we want to exclude one value only, we can write it like this. We can write x can be between minus infinity and zero, but not equal to zero, with the union that it can also be between zero and infinity. And we actually get the exact same thing for y, because y cannot also equal zero as well. So this shows all values except for zero. Thank you.